Recently, I was given a book that was a reproduction of something that was produced in 1910 uh, to celebrate the town of Scottsdale, Pennsylvania by prominent photographer H.J. Springer. Scottsdale at the time was the second richest community in Westmoreland County. Um, the book contained uh, information on all the prominent people of the community, primarily bankers, manufacturers, people in the coal and coke industry, their homes, their businesses, churches, schools, and uh, other sites of interest. What we're going to do is take a look at some of those pictures and see what happens a hundred years later to a lot of these properties. As you know in most towns a lot of these old prominent houses and businesses can't afford to be kept up and they're torn down or raised. Uh, amazingly in this town many of the buildings and most of the homes of these prominent people are still intact and in they're pretty much the same condition. So let's take a look. This will be a low-tech slideshow of then and now. Scottsdale Foundry Machine Company is located on the Everson Scottsdale line. Now you'll see uh, to the left the old bridge that uh, connected Everson and Scottsdale and up on the hill is what was the old Scottsdale High School. Uh, the bridge angle is different so I couldn't get an exact what it looks like today but you get a general idea of what it the foundry looks like uh, these all these pictures were taken in 2010 100 years later there was a two-page spread on the prominent residences of Scottsdale once again these homes were owned by mostly bankers and manufacturing um, folks and there was a lot of uh, relatives that owned these homes most of them were on Chestnut, Arthur, or Laux Avenue. Laux being uh, probably the wealthiest street in Scottsdale. Uh, many of them are still standing. This is the W.H. Lingerman House. Uh, Lingerman was the general superintendent of Frick Coal and Coke Company. That house on Arthur Avenue pretty much looks the same. J.S. Parker was the um, president of Scottsdale Savings and Trust, which uh, is a bank that survives today in Scottsdale. The house, as I said, once again, pretty much looks as it did. Laux was a big uh, name in Scottsdale to the point that Mrs. Laux had a um, had her own house apparently. This is on uh, Chestnut Street and most people in the town all know that today as the current location of the Scottsdale Historical Society and over the last couple of years they've done a nice job of uh, getting it back into shape as it was falling into disrepair. J.P.K. Miller House, uh, another Frick uh, bigwig, he was the chief engineer for Frick Coke Company. This house is located on Chestnut Street going up the hill and um, taken in the summer you can't see the porch so well uh, but the house pretty much looks as it did. J.R. Stauffer and his brother W.F. Stauffer were the president and vice president of Scottsdale Bank. Scottsdale Bank doesn't exist anymore um, probably lost in the depression. Uh, this is located on uh, Chestnut Street the porch is gone, but the house pretty much looks intact today. 
his brother W. F. Stauffer had a what I consider a nicer residence on Laux Avenue. And complete with the columns, it survives to this day. Finally, the J.P. Brennan House, it's located going out of town on Broadway, uh, had fallen into pretty bad disrepair in the last couple of years, but somebody came in and restored it. And pretty much made it look like what it did a hundred years before. A lot of attention to detail. Some of these houses don't exist anymore. Then they would take pictures of the prominent streets in Scottsdale. Laux Avenue, I think they referred to as Millionaire's Row. Your reference house is the one on the right here. But the street pretty looks the same a hundred years later. Grove Street is a couple streets over. Um, lesser uh, quality homes were on that street, but the setup pretty much is what it was. And behind Laux was is Arthur Avenue, which borders the uh, school. And as you see from the house on the right, the setup's pretty much the same. Downtown Scottsdale went through a transformation in the early 70s. I guess it was falling dilapidated. This is Pittsburgh Street uh, going up from uh, Broadway. The right side of the street was completely wiped out in a um, failed uh, project that was going to put in new shopping. Uh, somebody came in, convinced the community to tear out all those buildings, and then they went bankrupt. So the banks came to the rescue and set up new businesses across the street from the original locations. And over the years, some other businesses have moved in as well. And the business, the building right here is about the only reference that you'll see in what it looks like today. As I said, the uh, whole right side of the street is gone. Going up a block, you had spring at Pittsburgh. There's a spring right here that probably watered the horses. The reference buildings that are still in place are right here and right here. The right side of this street pretty much is gone as well. This is what it looks like today. Probably the corner that doesn't look anything like it did is Pittsburgh at Broadway. This is looking uh, out of town going toward uh, Mount Pleasant. All the buildings on the left and right hand side are gone and you wouldn't know that it looked like that at all when you see what it looks like today. Scottsdale had a lot of hotels. Only one of them is still standing, and that is the Central Hotel. I'm not sure if it serves as a hotel anymore. It's probably more of a bar it's located on Pittsburgh Street, but the building still stands. Finally, all the banks were featured at the time. The largest one by deposits was the First National Bank with uh, A.L. Keister and C.H. Laux as the um, uh, president and cashier. This building's been changed somewhat. When I took the picture in 2010, it was a National City Bank. 
now it's a PNC bank. Uh, they changed the roof line and expanded out the back over the years. Scottsdale Savings and Trust is also on Pittsburgh Street. They moved across the street to fill in some of the void of all those businesses that were taken in the early 70s. But the original building still exists and pretty much looks like it did. So this gives you an idea if you want to take a walk around Scottsdale. It's a small town. Uh, you can see many of these properties today. I don't know if this book is available to you as a reference guide, but there's a, a lot of interesting history in this town.